Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Greetings, conversationalists. Welcome. I am delighted to have you. It's Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you text my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K, if you text that, to 33777. I will send you back a text message with all the relevant links to find me on social media, find the show on podcast and live stream and the website and all the interviews I conducted. I personally am biased. I thought six of the eight on stage sat down with me for 45 minute interviews. I learned more from them then than I did last night of the debate. But housekeeping matter to get out of the way with you. I am exhausted. Just so you know, normally when I do the gathering, I take off the Monday and Tuesday, but I couldn't this week. We had a presidential debate. I had to be here today. I've done TV hits through the night this week. I've got to be on uh, CNN and News Nation tonight, Leland Vittert show on uh, News Nation, Anderson Cooper show on CNN at 8 o'clock. Uh, it, it has been a crazy week. I gave Charlie today off. He is completely burned out, just wiped out. Uh, after the gathering, and I am too. I had to be here, though. I'm I'm not coming to work tomorrow. I intend to sleep late. Uh, it is my kid's 18th birthday this weekend. We're going to take her out of town uh, after school, so I am I'm exhausted. I I am. Philip last night was like, are, "Are you getting enough rest?" No, I am not getting enough rest. My assistant asked me if I had, had done some thank you notes. I needed just like, when have I had time? I'm like, try not to snap at everybody. Um, Charlie is irritable and, and he has taken his family to the beach for a few days of rest. I am exceedingly irritable at this point, uh, and trying to be kind to everyone calling 877-973-7425. I'm going to start this half hour with phone calls to get your reactions and thoughts, uh, or questions about the debate that you saw last night on Fox news. Let's go to Ben. You're up next. Welcome. Hey, Eric. I was watching the debate last night, and with everything I saw and everything I heard on the stage, the thing that shocked me the most actually happened off stage when Fox News cut to commercials, and all of a sudden I saw a commercial for TikTok, and it floored me, and I just wanted to get your opinion on that, uh, the optics of it, and you know why you think maybe Fox might have accepted that revenue at such a critical time, given that they're supposed to be a conservative news media organization. <laughs> uh, because TikTok was willing to write them a fat check. That's the answer. Um, that's it. You can be disappointed, but they were very happy to take that money. Um, and, I mean, I I am one of the very few out there, and this isn't to pat me on the back. It's just that this is, this is who I am. I, I have turned down lots of ads and ad revenue um, because I just I I don't want to sell or advertise or let on my program those that I don't believe in. Fox is willing to take all comers. Uh, short of an MSNBC ad, Fox is going to take their money and they're going to pay top dollar to get on Fox News to be seen. And they're willing to take TikTok's money and they're willing to do reports on how conservatives say TikTok is bad. So that's the thing I think you got to notice. Fox is still willing to do advertising. Uh, or take advertising from companies and then do reports on those companies that aren't flattering, and that's on the company, not on Fox. Uh, Sandra, you're up next. Welcome to the show. Hey there, and thanks so much for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I got a chance to see these guys at your weekend um, conversation fest, which we dearly loved, and I wondered if I was going to hear some of the same things. But I'll have to tell you, I saw a decidedly different Mr. Ramashwani last night, and I had to resist the urge from shouting at the TV and throwing something through the TV because the guy wouldn't shut up. And I, I thank Chris Christie for sacrificing himself and pointing out the obvious. Um, this is a puppy dog needing treats. He's lapping up whatever he can lap up. And if he wants to partner with Trump, 
I got to tell you, we'll we'll never be able to hear anything else but the two of them in a big echo chamber talking <laughs> a mile a minute. Look, um, um, Mike, I, then, go ahead. No, my, I was going to say my candidate uh, held firm, and I'm still with him. All right, and who's he your was candidate? Right to the right, right to the right of Vivek, <laughs> Ron DeSantis. <laughs> there the you way. go. Xandra, thank you very much for that. Um, I, I'm I I am intrigued again by the 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 Vivek Vivek, um, by by just the um I, I just I'm I'm very very intrigued by people either really liked it or they really didn't. Um, there is you know I will tell you I, I put on Twitter last night it reminds me of the old joke uh, that the the CrossFitter the atheist and the vegan walked into a bar. We only know because they made sure everyone knew. I would add uh, for Vivek Millennial, the, the the Millennial walked into the bar. We only know because he made sure everyone knew because Vivek is very proud of and wants everybody to know he's a Millennial. He's not Gen X. He's not Gen Z. He's not a boomer. He's a Millennial, and, and he's a Millennial. And did he mention, by the way, that he's a Millennial? All right, Joe, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Thank you, Eric. Uh, First-time caller. Uh and motivated to do so by the comments from Nikki Haley. And maybe I've missed it, but I haven't heard anyone else's uh, uh, opinion about it. When she said that the uh, Democrats are not responsible for excess government spending, but the Republicans and Donald Trump are. Uh, someone earlier also said that. No, no, no. Yeah, to be clear here, she said it wasn't just the Democrats, it, it was the Republicans just, but too. It, it, no, she. I, 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 Unless I misheard, it was Democrats, but even just Democrats uh, still uh, is uh, detracting from the main purpose, in my mind, of what these debates are, which is to benefit the Republican Party in general by, of course, picking the best candidate. And uh, comments that uh, now someone also said you're not under oath up there. So I, I know that there's been, you know, some spending bills and mistakes and things that uh, uh, Republicans have made. But anyone who could in any fashion uh, come up with the conclusion that there's a co-equal uh, a guilt factor in government spending is so far off base uh, as to be absurd. And Well, you uh, know, Joe, I, I actually, I mean, Chris Christie made this point at, at my gathering, too, and I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to it. I mean, he, that J Donald Trump in one term added more money to the national debt than, J than Barack Obama did in either one of his terms. Obama added more in eight years than Trump, but Trump in four years added more than either George Bush in four years or Barack Obama in either of his four years. Joe Biden will beat Donald Trump's record. And two of those years that Trump did this with, he had Republicans in charge of both houses of Congress. And, and that was the point that Haley and, and even um, Chris Christie were making is that you can't just say Democrats are the big spenders here, that Republicans actually in this past cycle added more earmarks to the federal budget than Democrats did. To Haley's point, Republicans added $700 million worth of earmarks to the additional supplemental appropriation. Democrats only added $200 million. All of which is 100% true. My point being, that's not anything that we're proud of. And it's not anything we need to be advertising or discussing. And in, in, I think it detracts from the main goal, in, 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 which is to defeat, you know, the progressive socialist of uh, Democratic Party. Oh, oh, OK, gonna, I, I, gonna, I see so, what you're saying, so but I disagree point, with I can, you because I, I think we got to hold our own side accountable. Well, I, I do, too, but not you, you don't have like they say, you're not under oath. You You, you don't have to, you know, you. Anything you say that Joe Biden tweets an agreement with, I don't think is a good plan. That's all I can say. No, okay. Yeah, I, I see your point, and I, I know you're not alone in that, but I, I fundamentally disagree. Uh, I fundamentally disagree. If if I criticize my party, Joe Biden might agree with me. It doesn't mean that my solution is the same as Joe Biden's. It just means that I've made a point of criticism and he wants to criticize the party as well. But if we do what you say, that we can't have public criticism of the Republican Party, uh, then we're not going to hold our own side accountable and clean it up. At, at some point, you do have to be open about you think your party's 
gone off the reservation on something. And, and you, you don't have to wait to be under oath. You need to be able to say, Republicans got this wrong too. Here's what I'm going to do to fix it from a conservative perspective. If you said, oh my gosh, Joe Biden may, may agree with me on that. No, I'm sorry. I, I fundamentally, fundamentally disagree with you on that, Joe, because we're at $32 trillion in national debt and Republicans did it too. And if we as Republicans are not willing to vote out of office, the Republicans who did that, then we're no better than the Democrats. Democrats approve and maintain every good thing Thing said about the Democratic Party, and I'm not a Democrat. I want to be able to criticize my party and hold my party accountable so that my party does not wind up being like the Democratic Party. And if we got to go on a debate stage or at a forum like mine in Atlanta and say Republicans did this too, it's a bipartisan addiction, and we've got to fight within our own party and clean it up, God bless the people for speaking the truth. Because the voters at the end of the day who are not Republicans are the voters we have to have to bring into the Republican Party to persuade those people to come to our side. And if we're going to lie to those people's faces and say, it's not us, it's them, when they know it's us too, well, we're going to come off as liars to them. We've got to be able to acknowledge our side's deficiencies in order to improve those deficiencies. The Democrats constantly give the Democrats a pass, and there are Republicans who say, well, we should just be like the Democrats and pretend we have no problems. I want to clean up my own side. And that requires that I, on a debate stage or behind this very microphone that I just tapped, say the Republicans suck on this issue too, and we need to do better. And I think that Chris Christie and Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis and Mike Pence leveled bipartisan criticisms. They, they, they were warranted, they were deserved, they need to be said, and we need to actually elect Republicans who aren't going to sell out the country like the Democrats have been selling out the country when it comes to raising debt. And it is a fact. It is an absolute, ascertainable, God's honest truth fact that in one term, Donald Trump added more to the national debt than Barack Obama did in either of his terms. Combined for eight years, Obama did more than Trump, but for a single four-year term, Trump outspent him, and most of it was because be, before COVID, not during COVID. That's just the truth. All right, Rick, you're next. Welcome. Hey, Eric, how are you? Good. What's going on? Well, you know, a big supporter of Ron DeSantis from the beginning. Uh, I think he does great in uh, interviews, especially long-form interviews like he did with you. Fantastic. But I felt like there were a couple of things he did last night. One, uh, he, he didn't answer the question um, – about whether Pence did the right thing until he was kind of forced to. It's like he started talking. I, I just didn't think it was a good look. Started, And they kept saying he didn't answer the question. Mm -hmm. And then when they asked whether Trump should be pardoned, he looked around, and then he raised his hand. So I thought they both looked kind of wishy-washy. I feel like he's taking bad advice. Um, yeah, you know, like okay, I'm glad you raised those two because I, now I, I, I think in fuller context, the, the, the second one wasn't as bad, although he's being beat up for it, and, and I, I get the optics of it didn't look good. Um, but that one, yes, on Pence, he should have come out of the gate and said what he said at the end. I don't have a beef with Mike. He did what was right. He should have started that way. Uh, and even yeah. several friends of mine who are on the campaign said that was probably his worst moment on the debate stage last night. It, it, it looked very wishy-washy on an issue he's otherwise been clear on. And yeah. I, I just I feel like that this debate gives him an opportunity to maybe reset a little further. Um, because they didn't attack him. They attacked uh, Vivek, but he's going to have to grab hold of the opportunity and make something of it uh, and, and yeah. move past those moments you noticed in favor of some stronger moments on the stage, uh, which gets me to him talking about America being in decline. I actually want to spend some time on that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to step out, uh, take a break. We'll take a couple of phone calls when we come back, if I can squeeze them in, and then I want to talk about this messaging about America being in decline. I've got some strongly held views on that. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson. There's some breaking news I've got to get to before I get my thoughts on decline in America. Uh, that is the Fulton County District Attorney, Fawny Willis, has filed a motion seeking an expedited trial against President Trump and his co-defendants. She wants it to happen this year now. Fawny Willis wants the RICO trial to happen this year, I honestly don't know how she can pull this off. It comes after Brian Kemp on stage with me on Friday said it wasn't going to happen. Um, this trial wasn't going to proceed before the election. Now she wants to try to ensure that it is. 
there are fundamental logistical problems with this. One, there's going to be a hearing on Monday on whether or not to move it to federal court. And I'll actually kind of be surprised if it's not removed to federal court because of uh, Mark Meadows and um, uh, what's his name? The not John Eastman, the other uh, Jeffrey Clark, who was an assistant uh, attorney general, let alone Donald Trump. Um it should be moved under the statute to federal court. And it's with an Obama appointee in court who may try to reject it, but I, I suspect it's going to go to an appeal if he tries to reject that. Um, it's also going to be incredibly burdensome to try to find a jury in this case uh, because you do have notorious clients. I mean, Donald Trump is got a basically 100% name ID and pretty much everyone has a strong opinion about him, which means the jury pool, it's going to take a very long time to try this case. So even if you start picking the jury now, it could drag out into next year. I mean, if you want an example of this in Fulton County, the same county, the same DA is doing a RICO case against a gang. There are were to begin with 17 co-defendants. They started picking the jury in January. It is August and they have not finished picking the jury. And that trial is expected to go on for about six months. So if you stay with the current judge at the Superior Court level instead of federal court, he's a new judge. He's only been there for six months. He's going to move slower than the uh, judge, uh, the, the chief judge who's handling the criminal RICO case against the gang. It's going to take a very long time to pick a jury to get this thing going. So good luck trying to start it this year, let alone keeping it in state court. I just kind of think, and most legal experts agree with me on the left and the right, that this is going to get moved to federal court. Now, if it does get moved to federal court, you're dealing with the federal criminal rules of procedure, which are less favorable to the DA and and will be more expeditious in conducting the trial. But it will still take a very long time to pick a jury that can hear the case. I just don't see how you can get this thing to trial this year just given the process of picking the jury where each of the defense attorneys will be able to participate in voir dire and strike uh, potential witnesses or potential jurors. It's going to take a long time. What's been happening for a while now as well is Americans for Prosperity on a road tour across America, a bus tour, talking about binomics and how to reignite the American dream, something I want to talk about in the next monologue. Uh, they, they want you to be a part of this. They want to educate you on what's wrong with binomics so you can explain it to your neighbor in easy, understandable ways. They want to explain it to you so you can go to your state legislature and provide useful solutions on fighting back against binomics at the state level. And they want you to be a good activist, to be able to go to door to door, to be able to go to your city council, go to your school board, to be involved in the political process. All you have to do is go to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric today. americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. You become a champion for free markets and free people for limited government on how to roll back the government, get the regulators out, shut down the deep state so that they can't overburden us and control our lives. Americans for Prosperity is dedicated to limited government. They want you on their side. Americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. Go sign up today. Be a great activist for AFP. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number 877-973-7425. I want to take a pause on phone calls about the debate, and, and I want to say something more specifically about something Ron DeSantis said. And, and I have echoed things similarly in the past, and, and a conversation with a friend actually got me thinking, and, and I think we should talk about it differently. And I, I hope his campaign might take this under advisement and the other campaigns as well. DeSantis, at last night's debate, said America's in decline, and decline is a choice. And he's right. Decline is a choice. And it does seem like we have chosen to decline. And it is inescapable that our great American cities are in decline. Uh, Oregon having legalized hard drugs, uh, seeing massive declines. San Francisco deteriorating. There, there does seem to be a decline and a malaise and an unhappiness. And uh, it, it's affecting voters, among other things. But I want to suggest we talk about this differently. On a more optimistic way to give people hope. Because it's not really that America is in decline, although it manifests itself as that you think we are in decline. 
But what it actually is, is we are being held back. The Democrats are holding us back. It feels like decline, but the data shows we are not fundamentally in decline. We're the only uh, major nation that still is at birth rate parity or higher. We need to fix it before it falls below replenishment rate and we're being helped by immigration. Our economy is outperforming every other economy on the planet, most specifically China. Our inflation, though high, is better than everyone else on the planet, except China, which is in deflation, which is worse. We still are the world's importer of people who wish to come here. People are not fleeing to, to, to immigrate to China or even to Europe. Everyone wants to come here. We being a nation in decline, it's, it's a unique manifestation of our mentality right now that we see uh, major cities in this country not doing well. We see crime in major cities and in suburbs, but really what it is is America is being held back. Our police are being held back by Democrats. Our economic engines are being held back by Democrats. Our families are being held back by Democrats. Our school children are being held back by Democrats. They're locking us down and holding us down. And Americans are ready for our economy to roar, our people to go back to their lives and their businesses and their neighborhoods and their communities. It is a democratic policy, not for decline, but for holding us back. They're, they're not letting us get ahead further. They're, they're trying to let the rest of the world catch up to us. And America should always be leading. Yet feels like decline. But I don't know that the candidates should say that it is decline. Because when you actually look at the data, we're not technically declining, even though we feel like it. And I actually do feel and think that what we're feeling, what, what manifests in our mind is decline, is the Democrats holding us back. The Democrats are trying to shutter Detroit, the automobile industry. The Democrats are trying to force them to get China rich instead of Americans rich by forcing battery-powered cars that only benefit the Chinese market because the Chinese produce the batteries, Americans do not. They're holding us back so China can come ahead. The Democrats have not caused a decline in our schools so much as they're holding our kids back. They're holding our kids back from success. They don't want our kids to be let out of public school into private school through choice lest they get too far ahead. They're holding our kids back. They're holding families back. They don't want high birth rates in this country. They think it's bad for the environment. They have disincentivized families in this country. You know, I was talking to a friend last night talking about the, the high cost of, of giving birth in this country. One idea that has been floated on the right is we should do everything we can to credit parents in such a way with the tax incentives of having children that they don't feel the cost of labor and delivery. We don't subsidize the hospitals. We don't subsidize the hospitals because that will make the cost of a birth extraordinary in this country. You subsidize it, the costs go up because the hospitals want to get rich. But you give dollar for dollar to families to discount dollar for dollar the cost of a birth on their taxes and spread that out over several years. If it's more than one, you've incentivized parents having free labor and delivery so that they can have kids. You use the tax code to reward families for having kids and you boost the childbirth rate in this country. You lower the family, um, you, you lower the tax burden on people who have kids under the age of 18. You incentivize them having children to reduce their tax rate. The Democrats are holding us back from doing that. You want pro-birth policies in the tax code to incentivize this nation's reproduction rate. You need to do that. The cost of living is going up because the Democrats are holding back our energy independence. So much of inflation right now comes from not just the government dumping money into the economy, but the government restricting energy production in this country such that the cost of oil and gas are going up. We used to be completely energy independent, and the Democrats are holding back our energy sector so that we can't be. 
The Democrats are holding back small businesses through deep, burdensome regulations. They won't let small businesses become big businesses. They want to protect with regulation the big businesses. They're holding back the small businesses from being able to compete. And with the big businesses, they're holding them back from being international powerhouses unless they already are because they don't want American companies expanding across the world stage lest their carbon footprint get too big. They're holding us back. The American people want to win the race. The American people want to run. The American people know the pace is fast and the work is hard and the success and reward are much. And the Democrats are holding us back from all of that. They want us to have less reward. They want us to have less incentive. They want us to be more burdened in our business conduct. They want us to be more burdened in our education conduct. They want us to be more burdened in our travel. They want us to experience higher costs to reduce our carbon footprint. We can't travel as much. Our families can't take flights anymore because the ticket prices are too high. And it's all by the design of the Democrats to hold back our economy, to hold us back from travel, to hold us back from success, to hold back businesses from growth, to hold back children from a better education. They're holding us back. We're not in decline. We interpret all of these things as the Democrats holding us back as us being in decline, but we're not in decline. America is always on the rise and you look economically and we are still succeeding ahead of every other country on this planet. Our economy is doing better. Our inflation rate is lower. Our ability to purchase a house is better. Our ability to get educated is better. Our ability to go to college is better. Our ability to live a meaningful life is better. And yet for us, the costs are so much higher than they were because the Democrats have decided to hold us back, hoping to provide provoke decline because they've chosen for us to decline, but America itself has overcome the Democrats' desire and choice for us to decline overall. We're just being held back now. Open the gates. Let us out. Let us run. Let us thrive. Let us be Americans and we will succeed. That's what the Democrats fear. So I would tell the candidates on stage, DeSantis and the others, I would move beyond the rhetoric of America in decline. And I would point out that if you feel like we're declining, it's only because the Democrats are holding us back from a better tomorrow. If you feel like the nation has gone backwards, it's because the pull on us by the Democrats is so strong to hold us back from a better tomorrow. If you feel like the world around you is less safe and more expensive, it's because the Democrats are holding back the police and the farmers and the energy production of this country. The Democrats are holding us back. And the way to move forward is to vote out the Democrats so that the Republicans will let us go. The Republicans will let us proceed. The Republicans will let us advance. The Republicans will let us run the race. The Democrats don't want us to run the race. The Democrats believe the world is better off when the United States is not the leader. The Democrats believe the world is better off when the United States is just one of an equal 198 countries on the planet. No better, no worse, no better off. Republicans have always known for the world to be safe, America must lead. For the world to be free, America must run. For the world to be prosperous, America must dominate. And the Democrats are holding us back from all of that. The Democrats are doing it. The Democrats are doing it with policies to disincentivize families. The Democrats are doing it with policies to disincentivize production in business. The Democrats are doing it with policies to disincentivize production of more people and children. The Democrats are doing it with more policies to disincentivize economic growth, to disincentivize educational opportunity, to disincentivize innovation. We're not in decline yet. The policies of the Democrats holding us back are designed to provoke decline. They have chosen to decline. They have chosen, the Democrats have. But I don't think you should say as a candidate, even if you yourself feel it, I don't know that you should say that we as the nation are in decline. The Democrats want us to be in decline. And this is the choice for 2024. Do we decline or do we run the race? 
do we decline or do we advance? Do we decline or do we grow? The Democrats are holding on. The Democrats have themselves clutched tightly around us to prevent the growth, to prevent the momentum, to prevent the prosperity, to prevent the population, to prevent the families, to prevent the education, to prevent America from leading. And this election is not about a reversal of decline. This election is about letting go of the American uh, control by Democrats so that we can run the race, letting us go that the American people can thrive, letting us go that the American people can run the race, letting us go so that the American people can lead, letting us go so that the United States remains the dominant player on the world stage, letting us go be successful, letting us go earn money, letting us go dominate the world in culture and in education, in, in the economy, in technology, letting us do these things. The Democrats have decided it's bad if America's on top. And so they're trying to hold us back. Decline is the choice they've made. We, the Republicans, must choose to let us be prosperous and thrive and run the race of life and be ahead of all the rest. We, the nation, are not in decline by any economic metric, by any technical metric. We are not a nation in decline. But it feels like it because we feel the smothering, suffocating hold of the Democrats who have chosen for us to decline. But before we do, we can break free of their grip. And that's the choice of 2024, not to reverse a decline, but to keep us from declining by design of the Democratic Party, to not wind up like our cities, to unleash our police officers into the streets of America for safe families, safe schools, safe streets, safe businesses, to unleash the American entrepreneur, to unleash the American family, to unleash the greatness of America from the grip, the smothering, suffocating, choking grip of a Democratic Party that wishes us not to run the race and not to advance, all in the name of saving the world from us. They are ashamed of us. We should not be ashamed of being us, and the Republicans should not claim that we're a nation in decline. Whether you believe it or not, they should claim the Democrats have a smothering, suffocating, crippling grip on us to prevent us from being the prosperous people we've always been. That should be the message of the GOP. Now, I feel better having gotten that off my chest. The phone number, 877-973-7425. If you would like to be on the program, let me tell you about Swiss America, people, because I got to, somebody came to my office they wanted to see it yesterday and asked what that was, and it was my Walking Liberty half dollar that I got from Swiss America. I have it laying out on the table here. It's so cool. It is such a cool coin. It is a silver half dollar, and it is like real silver. You can get gold from Swiss America. You can get silver from Swiss America. You can begin your investment in precious metals to ease the ebbs and flows of the stock market. All you have to do is call them, 289-2646. Tell them Eric sent you. You can text message them, too, 800-289-2646. Message data rates apply. Or go to SwissAmerica.com slash Eric, SwissAmerica.com slash Eric. You can get a walking Liberty half dollar, like the one I have right here on my desk, for $13.50. It's a great way to get invested in precious metals at a reasonable price or to buy them for your children. $13.50, folks. Limit $250 per customer while supplies last. The Walking Liberty Half Dollar, it's gorgeous. It's a great way to get started in precious metals. 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com slash Eric. Go check them out today. Tell them I sent you. Get the Walking Liberty Half Dollar. Ask them as well for the report on the war on cash. Very important report they'll send to you. Government's trying to force us out of cash into digital currencies and credit cards so they can better control us. They've got a great report on it. SwissAmerica.com slash Eric, 800-289-2646. How would you like your wild and infuriating story of the day? I have made the point that America is not in decline, that the Democrats are just holding us back. We can't unleash the potential of the American worker and the American dream because the Democrats do want us to decline and their grip is suffering and suffocating and choking. Relevant to this, the Department of Justice has just filed a lawsuit against SpaceX. Do you know why the Justice Department has decided to sue SpaceX? Because, and I quote, SpaceX hired only U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents from September 2018 to September 2020. SpaceX refused to hire qualified asylum seekers and refugee applicants 
and repeatedly rejected asylee and refugee applicants because of their citizenship status. In other words, because SpaceX prioritized hiring American citizens over refugees and asylum seekers in this country who do not have citizenship or permanent residence, the Department of Justice is suing SpaceX. As an aside, can I say elections matter? If a Republican were in the White House, this would not be happening. If a Republican were in the White House, you would not see a lawsuit like this. This is politically motivated by the Biden administration's policies that require them to hold back America, the American worker, and the American citizen from engaging productively and meaningfully in the economy. They are suing a major technology company for hiring American citizens and legal residents over asylum seekers and refugees. Elections have consequences. And we have got to beat Joe Biden next year because of it. Now, you need to go beat a path to Omaha Steaks front door at omahasteaks.com and put Eric in the search bar. Take advantage of their Labor Day sale. They've got a great Labor Day sale going on 50% site-wide, and you get eight free Omaha Steak Burgers, eight free gourmet jumbo franks with the purchase of this order. You save site-wide 50% off as well. It's an incredible value in time for Labor Day. We are, what, just over a week away, a week and a few days from Labor Day. Your family's going to be getting together around the grill. You're going to want great stuff to grill out. If you go to omahasteaks.com today, you put Eric in the search bar, you get an incredible package with bacon wrap, pork chops, yes, butcher cut fillets, chicken breasts. You get gourmet jumbo franks and, and Omaha Steak Burgers for free, eight of them each, 16 total. It's incredible. It's delicious. And then don't forget, with school starting back now, you get the main courses and sides and desserts that you just pop in the oven and heat up. My wife loves the caramel apple tartlets. You will, too. They also have little chocolate cakes that I really like. You get so much at Omaha Steaks, and they have 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you're not happy, they'll make you happy. Omaha Steaks has been doing this since 1917. They know how to do it. They're that good at it. They can get deliciousness delivered to your door. You go to omahasteaks.com today. You put Eric in the search bar. Get their great Labor Day grilling package. Get the eight free burgers and eight free gourmet jumbo franks with it. Omahasteaks.com. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.